This is a revision video looking at the GCSE chemistry topic of covalent substances and specifically their physical properties. In this video we're going to briefly describe what we mean by a molecule and then look at both describing and explaining the physical properties of both small molecular substances and also giant covalent structures. It's important as you navigate the structure and bonding unit that you're using the correct language. This covalent bonding topic is one place where it's appropriate and correct to use the term molecule, which refers to a group of atoms covalently bonded together. You should know that these covalent bonds are only formed by non-metal atoms. And this could be just a couple of atoms, as in these hydrogen molecules, or thousands of atoms, as in a macromolecule like diamond. In the previous video where we introduced dot and cross diagrams for covalent molecules, we met the eight named examples from the AQA GCSE specification, and you do need to be able to draw all of these. But in this video, we're interested in what these molecules have in common with each other. How are their physical properties similar? The two physical properties you need to know for small covalent molecular substances are that they have low melting and boiling points, and therefore they're often gases or liquids that easily boil at room temperature, and that they don't conduct electricity. In order to explain why they have low melting and boiling points, we need to understand what's actually happening when something melts or boils. The individual particles that have forces holding them closer together are able to separate because that force is overcome by giving it enough energy. If you look at my diagram here, there are two methane molecules with a force between them, which we call a weak intermolecular force. If we compare it to the strength of a covalent bond, even the strongest intermolecular force is only about 10% of the strength of that covalent bond, which is why we call it weak. In order for these methane molecules to separate and for methane to become a gas, that weak intermolecular force needs to be overcome. It doesn't take very much energy to do this because it's so weak. So as we heat it, that intermolecular force is overcome and the methane molecules move apart. At no point do the strong covalent bonds inside the molecule break. If we had to break those strong covalent bonds, it would need a lot more energy. But when a small covalent molecular substance becomes a liquid or a gas, those covalent bonds do not get broken. In order to understand why these aren't conductors, we should think about what electricity actually is. Electricity, or current, is the flow of charged particles. And these could be delocalised electrons, or they could be ions. But if we look at an individual molecule, like these methane molecules, there isn't an overall electrical charge. Even though they're made up of positive protons and negative electrons, because there are the same number of them, and because they're together in one molecule, the overall molecule is neutral, and so there are no charged particles to flow, and therefore there can be no current. The strength of these weak intermolecular forces is directly related to the size of the molecules. So whereas my methane here boils at minus 162 degrees C, if I compare this to butane, which is a very similar molecule but a little bit larger, because it's a larger molecule, it has slightly stronger intermolecular forces, and these take more energy to overcome. And therefore, the boiling point of butane is slightly higher. If we follow this to its logical conclusion, we get to polymers. Polymers are very long chains of repeating units called monomers, and the monomers are held together with strong covalent bonds, so these are molecular substances. Between the polymer chains, there are still weak intermolecular forces. But whereas my methane and my butane on the previous slide only contained a handful of atoms, a polymer will contain thousands of atoms. And so the weak intermolecular forces are thousands of times stronger. And that means that polymers are usually solids at room temperature. We can also use this same logic to explain the physical properties of giant covalent structures such as diamond, graphite and silica, which are all solids at room temperature with high melting points. Diamond is made from carbon, and in a piece of diamond every single carbon atom is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms. It's not possible to separate out one atom without breaking covalent bonds. It's not like the small molecular substances, where there are individual molecules that can be broken apart. The whole of the diamond is one big molecule. This means it has a very high melting point, because in order to melt it, you have to break those very strong covalent bonds. It also makes diamond very hard. 
Finally, diamond can't conduct electricity because it still doesn't have any charged particles that are free to move. Silica, or silicon dioxide, has many of the same physical properties as diamond. It has a high melting point, it's hard, and it can't conduct electricity, because like diamond, it's a giant covalent structure, and it's not possible to melt it without breaking all of those covalent bonds. You'll often see exam questions which ask you to compare diamond to graphite. They're both made out of carbon, so you might expect that they'd have very similar physical properties, but actually there's a lot of differences between the two. They do share one physical property in that they both have high melting points because they both contain thousands of strong covalent bonds which require a lot of energy to overcome. But the similarities stop there. Whereas in diamond, each carbon atom makes four strong covalent bonds, in graphite, each atom only makes three covalent bonds. And that means that there's one electron left spare. That electron can be delocalized, which means it no longer belongs to a particular atom, it's shared between the whole structure. This is the same thing that happens in metals. So we have a sea of delocalized electrons, and these are free to move and carry charge through the substance. This is why graphite can conduct electricity, which is incredibly unusual for a non-metal. The other important thing about the structure of graphite is that the atoms form layers we have sort of sheets of hexagons, and in between those layers, there aren't any strong covalent bonds. There's just this weak intermolecular force. And that means it's very easy for the layers to slide over each other. And this makes graphite soft and slippery. Thank you very much for watching. If you did find that useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.